a United States Senator, an opportunity to be a candidate for President of the United States? in this country. This administration has cut down on the number of people who can be here illegally. That's keeping families separated for months, for years. That does not make us stronger. That does not promote our economy. And it is not consistent with our values. We need to expand legal immigration. That's part one. need to provide a path to citizenship for the people who are here to stay. Dreamers, yes, but also grandmas and grandpas. People who come here to do farming work, students who overstay visas. These are our friends, our neighbors, our families, we need to bring them out of the shadows. We need a path to citizenship that is fair and achievable. That will be good for all of America. That's part two. Part three is we gotta end this ugliness at the border. every day, and that means no more breaking families up. No more children taken away from their parents. No more abuse of people who come here seeking our help, seeking an opportunity for safety and to build a future. about 14 months ago, when it first came out that our government, acting in our name, using our taxpayer dollars, was taking babies away from their mothers. And I went into one of these centers. I, I just want everybody, I know you all have seen this, I know there's been a lot of talk about this, but I just want to tell you what it looked like to me. The one I went to see in McAllen, Texas, looked like a giant Amazon warehouse. Only it was dirty and it smelled bad. And when I walked in, on the left were cages packed full of men. Cages, they were cages, maybe 10 feet wide, maybe 40 feet deep, a toilet back in the corner. One after another, after another, after another. And on the right, cages full of women. And I thought, God, this is hard to look at, but I 
didn't know what was ahead. I stepped into the main part, and there were the big cages of little girls. Cages of little boys. Back in the corner, cages of the nursing mamas, the ones with the little babies. I, I talked to as many people as I could while I was there, and I still remember one mother who said to me um, that she had come from Central America. She said she had, she had never planned to try to come to the United States, but she said she'd given a drink of water to a police officer, and the word had gone back to the gangs that she was working with the police. And when she heard that, she knew what it meant, that the life of her baby and her own life were now at risk. So she wrapped up her baby and ran. An America that cannot tell the difference, an immigration system that cannot tell the difference between a mama with a baby, a 12-year-old girl, a criminal and a terrorist is not an immigration system that is keeping us stronger. It is making us weaker. So we start by saying no more. No more. On my first day in office, we will not break up babies, from, uh, break up families, take babies away from their parents. But there is more. People ask me, what can we do today? And I'll tell you what we can do today. I say to everybody who works right now in our government, keep in mind that it is illegal right now in America to abuse immigrants, to sexually abuse children, to refuse to get medical care for those who need it. And while Donald Trump may be willing to look the other way, President Warren will not. And just one more point on immigration, and that is we've got to change what we're doing at the border, but we also need to recognize much of this is a crisis created by the current administration. We need to put more help into Central America and into other countries that are struggling. So, we gotta live our values on immigration. Let's see, second thing I said I wanted to talk about, climate change. Uh, I mentioned it earlier. I mentioned it because it's so much fits into what's going wrong in this country, the corruption. How it is that politicians continue to take money from giant oil companies, from big mining companies. I understand you've got uranium mining issues here, right? Politicians keep taking money and keep doing nothing. This is the urgent crisis of our time. Climate change puts every living thing on this earth at risk, and it is our moral responsibility to fight back now. And I got a plan for that. So I'll do the short version. Because uh, it's hot out there, climate change, right? Okay, it's hot out there, so I'll do the short version. But here's the first part, and that is on the first day that I am sworn in, I will put in place a moratorium on any new drilling, any new mining, on any... Oh, I love saying this. Can do all by herself. And I promise you, I will do it. All right, that's part one. But part two is we need some more big structural change here. The urgency of the moment, we're running out of 
of time on this one. The problem is enormous. And understand this, even if America gets to zero net emissions by 2030, we're only 20% of the problem. We've got a whole rest of the world out there. So we have to think not just big, we got to think really big on this one. So here's how I look at this. The experts estimate that over the next decade, we're going to have about a 23 trillion dollar market for clean around the world. Meaning sometimes clean energy, meaning ways to clean up the air, clean up the water, desalinization, lots of different parts to this. And much of what we need isn't even invented yet. So I say that's opportunity for America and opportunity for us to lead the world. And here's, here's how it works. So I have a proposal that we put big investments into what we do best, and that is research and innovation. We're good at this. And then we say to the entire world, you want to use all the new science we develop, all the cool things we invent, all the things that will help clean up this earth? You bet. We will do it, but we'll let anybody use it. You've got to build it here in America. And then part three to this is we get out there and sell it, and if we have to, give it away all around the world so that we save the entire planet. That's our job. Here. This grain manufacturing plant estimate is it would be about 1.2 million new manufacturing jobs, good union jobs, right here in America. And a chance for America to be a leader in a way that we can all be proud. I would mention because I get this question and I'll tell you the hardest question this is my 116th town hall Woo! it's amazing that I love Arizona it's amazing how many town halls you can do if you're not spending your time behind closed doors with a bunch of millionaires and corporate CEOs <laughs> now in Puerto Rico uh, yes. to, us, to talk with folks because we're gonna this is this is how we're gonna make this work. But the toughest question I got was from a little boy, I think he was about eight or nine. And what he wanted to know is in a world where kids get shot, what are we gonna do to keep him safe? And that's a hard question. Because here's how I look at this. Today, seven children and teenagers will die from gun violence in America. Think about that. Seven. And it's not just the mass shootings that get headlines. They die on our sidewalks. They die in public parks. They die in people's backyards. They die in communities of color and everybody looks away. Nobody wants to pay attention. These are our children, and we have a moral responsibility. You know, if seven children were dying every day from a mysterious virus, man, we'd be all over this, right? We'd be right on top of it, but not in the case of guns. And it's not like we don't know what to do. We need universal background checks. Oh!
had to do, and here's the thing, huge margins, by huge margins, majorities of Americans want us to do this, including majority of gun owners. They said, come on, let's do some sensible things. So why don't we do it? Corruption, the NRA holds Washington by the throat. So what do you do in that case? And the answer is, just like we've talked about, you hit them straight on on the money, and we build a movement all across this country. Moms demand action. We got any in here? Our students march, right? Yes. yes. And this is the heart of how we're going to make change across this country. How we're going to do it. We're going to do it from the inside. You bet. As president, as a candidate for president, I'll lead, I'll get out there and fight. But we're going to do it by building a grassroots movement, person to person, all across this country. That's how we will hold Congress accountable, and that's how we'll make real change in this country. me about having a lot of plans. But you know, my view is you want to get something done, you ought to have a plan for it. But they do. I've had, I've had the fancy politicians back in Washington, I've had people in the Senate tell me, you know, Elizabeth, I, you know, I've watched, you're out there, you're talking to me. It's too hard. No. It's just too hard. You're asking for too many things, it's too much. Just people, just smile more. Yeah, yeah. And here's how I think about this. Here's how I think about this. What do you think they said, the naysayers said to the abolitionists? You're never going to make change in this country, right? That's not going to happen. What do you think they said to the suffragettes? Too hard, quit now. What do you think they said to the early union organizers? Too hard, quit now. What did they say to the foot soldiers in the civil rights movement? Too hard, quit now. What were they saying just a few years ago to the LGBTQ activists? Too hard, quit now. But they didn't quit. They got organized. They built a grassroots movement. They persisted. Yes. And they changed the course of American history. Yes. This is our moment in American history. 2020 is not just about the next four years or the next eight years. 2020 is about our direction for generations to come. And 2020 is our chance to build a nation of our best values. And how are we going to do it? We're going to get organized. We're going to build a grassroots movement. 